Hi, YouTube. Or as they say, hello, world. Um, I'm Maya Sundermeyer. Uh, I bet you wonder where I've been the last uh, several months. Well, number one, I have had class all summer, and the summer session is a lot shorter than, uh, say, fall semester and spring semester, and you have to know the material before you even go into uh, a summer session. And so I'm not taking any more summer sessions unless I've studied a whole bunch of knowledge in statistics or psychology. But I've also uh, been really busy with some other things for the last couple weeks. It's complicated, don't wanna talk about it right now. So there's that. And then of course I have a lot of editing, but needless to say, I have one video done on my uh, adventure to Chicago. So be sure to look for that. But the reason why I wanted to post this today is because I read a really, really sad story. And it's just graphic information that had happened to a girl in Louisiana who's autistic. Actually, she's not a girl. She's a young woman. She has to be at least 24 now, or 23. One of those two. But this is about a girl in Louisiana named DP. And she had lost her mother recently and had uh, changed Peggy over to other relatives who not only took advantage of her by stealing her social security, but they abused her to the most extreme case. Uh, I would say this is uh, probably a form of severe oppression. And she wasn't even allowed to sleep in a regular bed. They made her sleep in a cage and she had an ID and she had a cell phone, she had a laptop and everything. And these relatives took them away from her because they were afraid that she was going to snitch on them. And she tried to run away once. And one of the relatives that was responsible for the abuse and did all these things to her, the one who stole her cell phone and also stole her social security, threatened to kill her. So they put her in the cage because the tent just wasn't working out. Uh, they were making her do uh, chores around the house and they were making her do things like either scrub the floors with a toothbrush or with her hands, sometimes with her tongue, which is barbaric. Uh, they were making her eat her eat feces from people off people's underwear. And it's so bad that, I mean, her mother was cremated. They made her eat her mother's ashes. And if she wanted food at all, uh, she had to work for it, but her portions were a lot smaller than her relatives. And so <laughs> they believed, and I, I read about this, that they called her the R word. And they said that the R word uh, will do anything that, that they ask. And they thought it was funny. So <laughs> this is probably the most uh, severe case of abuse that I've seen on an autistic, but, um, this uh, type of brutalities and abuse and oppression hasn't just been done on autistics. Um, I don't know how many of you ever read David Peltzer's A Child Called It. It was about um, his childhood and about his mother, how she loved him. But because she was mentally ill, she began to uh, abuse him when he was about six years old. And it started off as punishment and then it became beating. And then he wasn't allowed to have a regular bed anymore. He wasn't allowed to have food and water. I mean, all of her other children were angels, but he was the bad boy. So I know that uh, autistics aren't the only ones that face that kind of abuse. I mean, this has been going on for a long time. I and mean, every now and then you hear it like a genie although she had disabilities too, but Jeannie was uh, a young girl in the 70s who had uh, been abused by her father. Uh, she wasn't allowed to have a regular childhood. They made her, uh, or they tied her to a potty chair and they had her uh, sleep with a sleeping bag with her arms up close to her waist. And she had a disability, but Look her up. Jeannie's story uh, 
is really well known in the psychology community. But her story was a, was really severe before she uh, st stayed with some researchers for a while. So, but getting back to uh, the story with the autistics, one thing I've learned is just because somebody is available after there is a parent death doesn't mean that they're going to be caring. What they need to do, or any situation, is there needs to be more than one option. And it's really sad that DP ended up in a situation like this. And though I'm not showing any emotions, I'm crying on the inside and I'm angry that she lost her rights, that people thought they could beat her, that people thought they could malnourish her because she's different, because they don't understand, they don't care, because they think they can take advantage of her because she's vulnerable or because she's the R word. <laughs> okay? I'm not okay with what happened to her. And that's why I'm putting this up there because... There's so many <laughs> good people out there nowadays that are uh, treating autistics like they're equal. There's so many good people out there who are not hitting their kids. I mean, there's so many good people out there that, yes, they're uh, making their uh, child do chores or their relative do chores, but they're not malnourishing them. They're not withholding food from them. They're not beating them. They're not forcing them to do sexual acts because they're vulnerable. No. I mean, no. I mean, I've seen more cases where parents are scared to let their kids go out in the world. And they're, they're babying them. They're underemployed or unemployed. But it's nothing that bad. And so in the coming weeks, in the coming months, I, uh, I wish to look more into the story, and I'm sure that the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network is going to be on top of this case, and rightfully so. And if there's anything I can do as a self-advocate, as an autistic, I'm going to do whatever I can to speak out. And the first thing I'm going to do is share that story as much as possible. And so, for those of you who are on the spectrum, whether you're relatives whether you're caregivers, whether you're professionals, whoever you are, I want you to click on this link below. And I want you to read the story. And I want you to spread the word. And I want you to remember that disability rights are civil rights. And this young woman had civil rights that were taken away from her because of some selfish people that are sick and selfish people that don't care. So. Anyway, I'm Maya Sundermeyer. If you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Please be sure to um, share my story. Also be sure to check out my other blogs. Uh, what I do is, number one, I uh, share my experiences of living on the spectrum. Even though I don't look like I'm autistic and some people are evidently against what I'm doing, you don't know uh, diddly squat about me. You don't know how many times I've had to go to the doctor as a little girl because my parents wanted to find out what was going on. Um, and second, I give my two cents on what's going on with autism in the media, like I did today. And I'm giving my two cents now about that. Uh, third area, I like to provide tips and advice for those of you who are on the spectrum. And then I will cover topics and things that I'm passionate about. And then recently I've been getting into the uh, day in the life type vlogging because I want you guys to see that just because I'm different, doesn't mean I can't lead a normal life. So, anyway. Oh, one more thing. I also have a series of written blogs on WordPress, which are, they're practically application and scholarly. And I also uh, write reviews and blog for Future Horizons now, which is the company that publishes uh, books for Temple Grandin and a lot of other wonderful people like Jennifer O'Toole and Anita Lesko who had that all autistic wedding in 2015. In fact, their three year anniversary is coming up. But um, I'm about to sign off now.